it was awesome. Um, so that was a lot of fun. I'm really glad we did that and made that happen. I hope that you're finding some kind of respite, respite, respite? Oh gosh, I don't even know what words are. Hey everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 71 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Tuesday, July 14th. 2020 and it is another crazy hot summer day here in Texas. I have no idea what the temperature is. I just know that we're at the point where we're reaching like 100 degrees <laughs> just about, I don't know, every day. So whew, yes, it is very, very hot outside. But as you can see, I am wearing some knitwear today. I have a new top that I just finished and something else I actually finished up over the weekend and I can't wait to share it all with you. So let's go ahead and get started with what I am wearing. So I just finished my Lilium, which is I think just called Lilium, but hashtag Lilium T on Instagram. It is by Megan Nodecker, who is Pip and Pin. And it is an adorable little top with this beautiful lace detail and welt. Um, and it's super, super cute. So if you've been following along, on Instagram you have seen how much trouble that I've caused myself with this design or with this sweater it's not any fault to the pattern designer at all I simply made some errors of choices along the way um, the first being that I really chose the wrong size because this should be coming a little further out just about like that so they're like small sleeves but because I only had two skeins of yarn i decided to go down a size and honestly it fits like i can wear it it's no problem it's just a tighter fit than my preferences so lesson learned for next time and then i had some other things going on with like the body i actually knit it way too long and had to rip some back which was not a huge deal it actually was pretty quick because the ribbing on the bottom is really really short um so after that it it's it that's done um i think oh yeah i did block it like halfway through once i had joined the underarms because i was really worried i wouldn't be able to put it on so fortunately it all worked out i've learned some things for next time and that is all good this yarn that i used i would totally use again it's from gritty knits it's car called darlin wool cotton and this colorway is josephine and praise be you never have to hear me say that again because i know so many of you have been watching for like i don't know the past six weeks or something that i've been working on lilium it's finally done you guys <laughs> um, but i am super pleased with it i can't wait to add it into my wardrobe and wear it the rest of the summer and into the fall since it is so hot here in texas so i'm wearing it today for the podcast and i need to go get some pictures of it maybe i can convince my husband to take some pictures of me although i'm not super tempted to go outside at the moment honestly um yes now i actually have another finished object a project that i started and finished this weekend which is just crazy so let me show it to you and that is this tote let me get it facing a little better it kind of is hard to see when it's so bright there we go do you love it it's so cute so this is a new design that i am working on it's been an idea in my head for a while i think it's going to be called the big dots tote given the dots but also because i have a tiny dots bucket or maybe i'm going to call it big dots bucket i don't know yet but it is really really cute it's a lot of fun to make it works up really quickly i used sugar and cream cotton held doubled just like i do for my float totes um, but this has some fun play with colors and i love that spike stitch edging so so much fun um, i haven't done anything special on the inside yet but i think i am going to make something small that i can kind of put in as an insert because what i typically do and here's one of my small my one skein float totes i usually carry this around the house right now it's got sock yarn in it and a sock but i will also throw like 
my AirPods, the nail polish color that I'm wearing, my lip gloss, I will just keep it in that tote. And then when I come downstairs to work, I bring it with me. I always have my sock, my lip gloss, that kind of stuff. When I go upstairs, I bring the tote with me. It's just my like carry around the house kind of thing, but that's a little small. So I was thinking this one would actually be perfect. Plus I love pink and so that makes it even better, but I would like something to put inside. Honestly, I could just set this inside, but something to keep my yarn, my project separate from the other things that I throw in here. Like, I mean, seriously, I'll throw phone, iPod, like just to carry from room to room. These are great for that. Um, so yeah, so this is a new design. I'm not ready to test it yet because I'm not sure if I'm going to do more versions or different sizes. I actually need more yarn because I don't have enough sugar and cream um, in the natural color to make any more totes right now, um, unless they're really small. So I'm just kind of, this one's kind of on hold for a little bit, but let me know what you think about this, the big dots bucket or big dots tote, I don't know what I'm gonna call it. Um, but if you want something similar right now, you can go check out the tiny dots bucket. It is truly tiny, it's like this big. I use it for sorting out like school supplies and stuff, it's really cute. Um, but it has a similar pattern on it. So that was a lot of fun. I I don't remember the last time I've done a project like that quickly, except maybe a cozy. So it was fun to cast on something new and finish something this weekend. The other things that I am working on right now, one is my Harry Potter socks. I was really gonna try to have this finished for you guys, but that just didn't happen. I am on the toe. I've just, um, so here here's where I was last week, right here, and I, put the heel in in this contrasting color, and that's what I'm gonna do the toe in as well. This is a yarn, I believe, from Canyon Dyes or something, I can't remember. I'm, I knit my brother a hat out of this yarn. It's a really nice yarn, and I just had a lot left over, so perfect for heels and toes. So I am doing a helical sock with these two yarns that are from Dragon Horde Yarn and Yarn Cafe Creations, and I am alternating them with the helical method. I really need another cozy for that. I need to make myself another 50 gram cozy because this one is not a 50 gram skein, so it didn't it didn't really fit inside there. It was a little too big. But anyway, I am excited. I can go ahead and finish that up soon and then I will maybe start the next one. I don't know. I am not sure what my plan is for socks after I finish this sock because now I have this sock or this pair of socks that will be halfway done. I have another pair of socks that are halfway done that I started in like May. But what I need to do is make my next round of sock week socks. If you haven't seen those, I'll have the sock week video linked down below, but I am going to knit those within a week so I can record my survival guide for you guys. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So those will probably be the next socks that I actually work on probably so i need to finish this one up so that i can be ready to do my sock week socks i think that's a good plan but there you go lots of work on that sock and then i started another new project i know it's just crazy this week so i decided that i wanted another skinny uh, can cozy like where is it like this one, one of the self-striping ones. And I decided I wanted to be super extra <laughs> and make it out of sock week yarn. So if you haven't seen it already, this is one of two sock week yarns. This is the self-striping from Malia Made It. And I have just enough yarn, like the exact correct number of stripes left on the ball to make a cozy and then get to the point where I need to be to match the previous sock that I made. So let me back up and try to say that again. There are 10 colors in here. When I knit the first sock, I've only knit the first sock of this pair, I ended with color number one, with the coral, which is what I started the, the sock with. So I used up the coral. So that would mean I would have to unwind the next nine colors to get back to coral to start the second sock. But this cozy takes nine stripes. At least it did for me when I made this one. So I decided, well, instead of just unraveling it, why don't I make a cozy with those nine stripes? And then I'll be right back at the coral to start my second sock for sock week. So 
Just started that. I should probably grab, I will in a second, a little marker because this is another thing that I can, with the sock and this, finish up over this next week. Because honestly, when I do my survival guide, I'm going to be attempting to knit two socks, a pair of socks in a week, which I don't think I've ever done before. It's going to be a huge challenge for me. So that's going to be all of my knitting. So I need to like clear out my other projects so that I am ready to go for that. So that's the plan. I, I did a lot. I feel like I did a lot this week. It still doesn't take me very long to talk about. I don't know what's happened to my rambling, but it's just, it hasn't been at, at the same level lately. <laughs> but yeah, two finished objects, Lilium, the tote, and then a new project and lots of progress on my socks. Um, coming up, I, like I said, I'm gonna focus next week on doing my sock week socks, so probably nothing new until then. But then I wanna cast on another garment. And I asked you guys on Instagram, would you cast on another summer garment, given that it's July 14th, or would you cast on a fall garment? So I still haven't decided. A lot of you said, go ahead and do summer, especially being in Texas, like, you know, we still have a long time till it gets colder. Plus you can wear stuff like this underneath a cardigan or a sweater, something that is gonna keep you nice and warm. So I haven't decided what I wanna do yet. I have plenty of choices here behind me, tons of yarn to choose from. There's more back behind it. So I just need to see what's sparking my interest. If I wanna go ahead and start something long sleeve or something short sleeve basically is what it is. So haven't quite decided yet, but stay tuned. Probably in the next couple of weeks, I will have a new garment ready to go. All right, let's get into some questions. I have several new questions here in the Ravelry group. So if you ever have any questions for me, feel free to head to Ravelry and put them in the Ask Me thread, or you can put them in the comments of this video. I pretty much always read all the comments, try to respond to them. So you can definitely ask me there and I will do my best to answer on the next podcast. Okay, this first question is from Kate Makes and she says, hi Natalie, love your podcast and your all of this and that channel as well. I too am an organized person who is trying to embrace a minimalist lifestyle. My question is about organizing slash minimizing leftover yarn. Do you keep all your scraps slash leftover yarn? How do you organize it? For context, I am knitting a cozy memories blanket and each square takes about eight grams of yarn. I would love to keep eight or 16 grams of yarn when I finish a pair of socks or a fingering weight project and then perhaps donate the rest. I would also love to hear more about curating a small and functional stash. So I have been working pretty hard over the last seven or eight months to really pare down my yarn stash. I've been using yarn from my stash for, stash for projects. I have definitely been buying some yarn, but not nearly at the rate that I used to. Um, I've also been clearing out and donating yarn that I know I'm not going to use. So what you see behind me is pretty much what I have. I do above on the top of this shelf have my scraps. So let me talk about that. So when I finish a project, I do a couple different things. I, I, kind, I will weigh it, actually I have my scale right here. I will weigh it and if it's more than 60 grams and it's a color I really like, sometimes I will just put it right back on the shelf where it belongs, but like behind the hanks of yarn. If it is less than 50 grams, what I will do is put it in this trunk that I have and that yarn is where I go when I have like, when I need heels and toes for my socks or when I am crocheting my granny stripe blanket, which is a scrappy project. And then if it's less than 10 grams of yarn or if I use it from the trunk and now it's less than 10 grams of yarn, it goes into this glass like container that I have and that is for my cozy memories blanket. Now, to be honest, I haven't worked on my cozy memories blanket in a really long time. It could have could be a year at this point, but it looks really pretty. It's not really like bothering me as far as taking up space right now. So right now it's a good storage solution until I decide, am I gonna continue with the Cozy Memories blanket or not? So that's pretty much what I've been doing. I also have a 
few scrap yarn balls or magic knot balls where after I finish the yarn, like I know that there's enough for all the scrappy projects, then I still have some left over. I can tie it into that scrappy magic knot ball. But that I started a long time ago, so I'm not 100% sure if I'll continue doing that. We shall see. But some other ideas to kind of like help you use yarn without feeling guilty, like throwing it away. Um, because a lot of people, they will, you know, use the yarn for a project and then they're done with it. Like they don't want to work with it anymore. And some yarns, I am like that. Um, so you can go ahead and if you know how much you need, wind it off for your different scrappy projects. So like 20 grams for a crochet one, maybe 10 grams for a knit one. And then if you still have more, you can start putting it aside and maybe it can be like you can exchange with your other friends who knit or crochet. Um, I've done that with friends before where we like trade 20 gram balls of yarn. So then you get stuff from their stash, you can put in your scrappy blankets, they get things that they don't have, they can put in their scrappy blankets. And that works out great. At the end of the day though, if you have to throw away some scrappy yarn, like it's totally fine. Like I don't think you should feel super, super guilty about it, especially if you're just holding on to it and not using it for anything. Um, so that's that's my opinion on that. Um, and a couple other things I've seen people do if you really, really wanna use it up. I've seen people put uh, like actual ends, like scraps into glass ornaments, like for Christmas. Um, you can do that, give it to friends or, or keep some for yourself. Um, I thought about getting one of those like they're kind of like a shadow box with like a hole at the top where you can just drop stuff in. So it'd be really fun if you had that shadow box with like a some kind of cute saying on it and then you could just drop your little tiny balls of yarn that you're done using into there and it would just fill and it'd be a cute little yarn decoration. Um, so I think that would be really cute. But there are a few ways <laughs> that you can use up your leftover yarn, hopefully without too much guilt. If you have any full size yarn that you're ready to get rid of, um, you can always donate it. I've seen yarn at Goodwill. If you know like a school that will take it, if you know some neighbor kids, I mean, there are so many ways to pass on your items that you no longer love to people who will love and appreciate them. So definitely explore that. Um, and then as far as curating a small and functional stash. That's something that I'm still working on. Um, I am trying now that I've gotten it, I feel like to a pretty reasonable size to start using up even more. Um, I kind of want to get to the place where like, I definitely have a few balls of yarn, especially for socks, cause you know, you never know when you're just gonna need to start a sock project. But as far as sweaters and stuff go, I don't know if I'm going to start to stash sweater yarn um that could change of course but part of me has this idea that it would be amazing to just when the new hohe sweater andrea mowry sweater comes out and i'm like oh i have to make that i will at that point go ahead and get the yarn for it because i'm excited about it in the moment i'm ready to cast it on so that's kind of my dream. So we'll see. It's gonna take me a couple more years, I think, to get to that point, because I've had a lot of this sweater yarn for a long time, but I am slowly working on it, and I actually just put out a minimal yarn room tour. So I will have that link that just came out today, which is perfect timing um, if you wanna check out part of my process in that. The next question is from T. Zano, I think is how you say it. Um, Hi Natalie, what's the charcoal gray yarn in the shelf that you have eight of? Also, would you ever do a video showing your yarn stash and any plans you have for your yarns? Thank you. Okay, so I think you mean this yarn right here because it looks like I have eight. And this is a Knit Picks yarn. It is Stroll Fingering and the colorway is jack rabbit heather so it is gray um but it is like oh i just lost what i was gonna say like a brown sort of a gray um and it's heathered so it's a really cool color i got it for a reason i don't remember i was gonna make something but now i can't remember what it was so now i just have it stashed ready for when the right sweater or cardigan comes along um 
but as far as Oh, a video showing my yarn stash. So I, like I said, I just did a yarn room tour, but I did not go specifically through my stash. So if that's something that you would like to see, like if you would like me to just pull all this yarn out and like show you what I have, I am happy to do that. That actually sounds like a fun idea because then I could see if there's any more yarn that I'm ready to part with. Um, so if you would like to see like a true yarn stash tour, let me know and I will make that happen. Um, and what's your other question? Oh, as far as plans for some of my yarns, I am going to do that sometime in August because well, I'm gonna do another like uh, project planning video for fall because I did a summer one and once I get through sock week, I'm gonna do a fall one. So I think that'll be really, really fun. So yes, I'm kind of planning those things, but if you wanna see like a true stash, like pull out all my yarn, show you my stash. I'm happy to do that. Just let me know and I can make that happen. Okay, the final question this week is from the Pink Stitch 26 And she says, hi Natalie, my question is, do you ever lose your knitting slash crocheting mojo? And if so, what do you do? Um, so I definitely lose my mojo from time to time, usually because something else has replaced that energy like being stressed out at work or so busy with other things that I just feel so tired at the end of the day that I don't really want to knit or I'm just not excited by my projects anymore because there's just too much going on. So that's definitely happened to me before. Um, what I usually do in that moment is just kind of ride the wave um, and kind of let that happen. Usually it helps if I work on projects that are simple. So like socks really help me in that moment. I don't do a lot on them because they are honestly not super exciting. But when I do get like a little itch to knit, it's nice to just do something plain and simple. Um, but if I'm really just feeling unmotivated, I will actually start something new. I will go through Ravelry and look for things that I can find to inspire me <laughs> um, and just other interesting projects. I might watch a podcast or um, scroll Instagram and see what is getting me excited to work on. And if that's not working, then it's okay. It's just a matter of time before you are interested in your projects again. The hard part is if you have lost your mojo because you have a deadline, that's really tough. So in that case, if you have something you need to finish or work on, I am super motivated by timers. So I will set a timer for 30 minutes and just make myself work on something. Maybe I reward myself along the way, like, okay, when I'm working on this project that I really don't wanna do, I get to watch this trashy TV show that's my guilty pleasure for that time period. <laughs> or when I'm done, I get to have a piece of chocolate. I don't know, whatever you need to do to motivate yourself, do it, no shame. Um, so that kind of helps me push through and still maintain my love for knitting and crochet and yarn. Let's talk about news. So my new video this week, I'm so excited about it, is my new minimal yarn room tour. So, so far you have seen this area behind me as it changed and you helped me move some things around and then you did not get to see what the whole room looks like. So that is in the minimal yarn room tour. I am finally where I am super happy with this room. Not 100% exactly like my final vision, but I don't know if it ever will be because that is kind of always evolving and changing. But I sold furniture, I moved furniture, I bought furniture, I changed so much stuff, I got rid of so many things. And this room is so much more open, tidy, clean, minimal, and it is amazing. I really wish that I could just stay in this room all day long, which is pretty much what I do right now. Um, but I feel like if I, was able to just stay at home and work here, I could be totally content and have all the things that I need. So I've finally gotten it to like a really, really good place. So go check that video out. I will have it linked. And if you wanna see where I came from, like where this room was, even not even a year ago, I have 
two other videos, three other videos really. I have a yarn room tour, my original one from November of 2019, it's a two-parter. And then I have one from January where I started to minimize. And then this one is really more like true minimalism, which I know you're like, it's not minimalism. But if you are a knitter, this is pretty minimalistic. So um, I am super excited to share that with you guys. And then Sock Week. Um, so Sock Week is happening August 9th. We are how many weeks away? Let's see. One, two, four weeks, I guess. I, I can't, I don't know if I'm looking at that right. I think we're four weeks away, August 9th from Sock Week. I'm so excited. Um, so Sock Week is a sock make along knit or crochet socks and the only thing you must like must do to enter am i saying this right basically it's a challenge to knit or crochet one sock in eight days so starting on sunday august 9th in the morning ending on sunday august 16th at midnight and you just have to make one sock but this year, if you knit or crochet additional socks, each sock counts as an entry. So you can have multiple entries. And the way you can enter is on Ravelry. Now, there's also a contest running on Instagram. So if you, one, don't even finish your sock, or two, don't want to participate on Ravelry, you can participate on Instagram and use the hashtag SockWeek2020 in your feed, and I will pick a winner from there as well. So. I actually meant to go see if there were any questions in the Sock Week thread. Let's see, there's a an information and chatter thread on Ravelry, but I'll also have all of those links down below. And then once Sock Week actually starts, there will be a finished sock thread for you to post your finished socks to. Okay, awesome. I didn't see any questions in the Sock Week thread, but let me know if you have questions about Sock Week. Lots of people are very excited. Some people are challenging themselves to knit a pair if they can. Um, several people have already gotten their sponsor yarn. So I will also have the three sponsors linked down below. We have Tia from Tia's Terrific Threads. She's got stitch markers and progress keepers. Then there is Molly from Molly Klein Design. She made bags, needle cozies, yarn cozies, which I believe sold out almost immediately, but she also has our variegated yarn. And then Malia from Malia Made It has our self-striping yarn. So all of those shops will be linked down below. Um, I know that they all still have stuff in stock, at least as of this moment, on Tuesday, July 14th. So please just check their shops. Um, I know that everyone is going to do their best to um, complete those dyed to order and made to order orders because they had uh, stock ready to ship and it sold really fast which is amazing thank you guys so much for supporting those small businesses but that also means um, that anything dyed and shipped from here on out is not a guarantee by sock week but since we still have quite some time they are are really fast and so hopefully they can make that happen but please communicate with the shop owners and if you have questions just let me know i am happy to help so let's talk about life this past weekend we went to the lake with some friends we were planning to go on the 4th of july but some things changed and we decided to postpone it but we have all been super careful about um, following all the CDC guidelines, not going anywhere that we don't have to go, like pretty much everyone has just been to the grocery store. Um, so we really were careful and made sure so that we could go enjoy this weekend with friends at the lake. So enjoy it, we did. It was really, really nice. That's why I got so much knitting and crochet done because I just brought a ton of stuff with me and woke up early, went and sat out on the patio, watched the lake and just knit and crocheted, listened to Harry Potter. It was awesome. Um, so that was a lot of fun. I'm really glad we did that and made that happen. I hope that you're finding some kind of respite, respite, respite? Oh gosh, I don't even know what words are. Um, finding some kind of break from the mundane as much as you can um, because it really was so great and so needed. However, 
On the opposite of that, I am already gearing up to start back to work and start back to school. So technically our first day for teachers is August 3rd, Monday, August 3rd. It's the first Monday in August, and that is just under three weeks away. And so I am already looking at how I can basically maintain what I've been doing this summer, which is the video content that I create, making patterns, making videos for my other YouTube channel. How can I make that happen and now go to work for like 10 hours a day? Because my work day is really long because of my commute and just being a teacher, it does end up being, well, let's see. I'm usually there from seven to four. So that's not 10 hours, that's nine hours, right? Yeah, anyway, so like a normal work day. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I am trying to figure out how I can make that work with going back to work. So I've been kind of playing with my schedule. I'm gonna start slowly adjusting to waking up earlier and start doing some things at night just to honestly get me mentally and physically used to working that much. So yeah, I wanna make it happen. It is totally worth it to me. Um, because if you don't know, my dream is to make YouTube and pattern design uh, my full-time job. And it's gonna take a while, I know that, but it is worth the hustle to make it happen. So I am going to be probably changing my video posting schedule here on Nitty Natty just a little bit because I'm gonna be changing it on my other channel. So I will let you know, but I am probably going to start posting on Mondays and Thursdays. So podcast day will stay Thursday, but I think I'm gonna switch my other video from Tuesday to Monday, which is not a huge jump, but just to let you know that is potentially going to be happening. All right, bringing me joy. So honestly, the weekend away brought me a lot of joy. It was so much fun to get to relax. I was happy to come home though too. I am such a homebody. I love my routine and schedule, but it was a really good time to see friends and I know going back to work, I am probably not gonna get to do that for quite some time. So that was really good. I really, really appreciated, is that the right word? I really, really didn't wanna take that for granted. It was a lot of fun. Anyway, okay guys. I am rambling too much, so I'm going to cut myself off here, but I will see you again next week. Bye!